Ladies and gentlemen, our task is daunting. For it to work, the politics of empathy must permeate all spheres of our institutions and breathe the cultural psyche of ordinary Malaysians. As with any such new way of thought, leadership is important for the message to take hold. I speak of a moderate leader as someone who can confront the many forces that pull our countries in sometimes differing directions and hold them together to produce Malaysia's third way, instead of one who stubbornly ignores realities that may contradict his ideology, singing away to his own choir. I am reminded of the words of Shakespeare, they are sick that surfeit with too much, as they are that starve with nothing. I believe moderates understand the complexity of the younger generation today. By and large, this generation want a more progressive Malaysia, but it is still not completely disengaged from the cultural and communal backgrounds or sensitivities either. These ironies are visible in simple everyday uh, observations. The same voices who call for an end to racial profiling in the name of national unity aren't ready to let go of vernacular schools that teach students in their mother tongue instead of the national language. It is not moderate to exploit these paradoxes, to create instability by engaging in an old exclusivist politics to gain mileage on the cheap. Instead, moderates need to argue that progress must happen within the hardened realities of today and not through a juggernaut of change shoved down Malaysians' throats, workable or not. True and positive change cannot just serve the interests of some. It must work for all. Again, I must say, resisting the temptation of pandering to any one extreme is a monumental test. It is much simpler to score political points operating from one clear side, and I know this. And contrary to popular belief, standing up against the establishment and shouting revolution or reformasi isn't the most difficult position to take in Malaysian politics. Instead, it is the moderates that have it the toughest, partly because if you don't play it right, you may end up pleasing nobody. But our country demands for leaders to make that sacrifice. It is hungry for those who can step up to the plate and advocate change while firmly placing it on a continuum of past Malaysian struggles, appreciating and internalizing the contributions of our past leaders from the fight of independence by Tuku Abdul Rahman right up to Tun Abdullah Badawi's bold steps towards greater democratic space and freedom. Granted, these men and the decisions they made weren't perfect, but today calls for leaders who understand that whilst change is necessary, it does not entail a rupture from the past, ripping away at the social fabric sensitivities, institutions, and recipe that has served us relatively well for the last 50 years. The scale of this task requires moderate leaders to be steadfast in holding their ground. Moderation doesn't mean we water down our positions or settle for the easy compromise. Too many potentially great leaders have fallen short this way. In facing our great challenges of the day, the catchy old saying, everything in moderation, including moderation, rings true. Oxymoronic as it may sound, to ensure that moderate politics contests and dominates our political and social consciousness, leaders must be hardline and dynamic moderates, also able to tread the thin line between the deceptive comforts of conservatism and the dangerous layer of unbridled type transformation, and do so with dogged conviction. Nothing less than our long-term political stability rests on the radical center. The unifying paradigm gaining a strong, hole, a strong foothold in the system. Radicalism needn't be reserved for extreme ideas confined to the fringes of society, but can be applied in crafting the middle ground to make it a viable alternative to the politics of either or, us and them. Our stability depends on the radical center, because if and when the old cleavages threaten to implode, a strong center will hold, and if and when things fall apart, or are being torn apart at the edges, the center must hold and pick up the pieces. From a strictly party political perspective too, this battle for the centre stands out as the one that will decide who gains the trust of the electorate in the foreseeable future. Securing the centre ground is the name of the game today. A year, of the, a year ago, many would have thought that the opposition bloc had this contest in the bag, ushering a new era of hope, latching on the bandwagon of a rhetoric-laced brand of change to stunning electoral effect. Many wrote off the Barisan National, they continue to do so today, saying that it is now rendered irrelevant with Pakatan's imploding arrival in the scene. But seeing the tone set by Pakatan Rakyat and the internal bickering about where exactly this unofficial coalition of convenience stands, I'm not convinced there isn't a space still to be won using the Barisan national formula. 
Quite the opposite, I believe that with the discipline and guidance of the new leadership under Prime Minister Dr. Sri Muhammad Najib, Barisan National can and will rebrand and populate the centre of Malaysian politics where it rightly belongs. Ladies and gentlemen, this new politics of empathy, located at the centre of the Malaysian political spectrum, can help in solving the identity impasse that has been a stumbling block towards greater progress. To resolve the question of identity is to finally, finally embrace the idea that one can be ethnic Malay and Malaysian, ethnic Chinese and Malaysian, ethnic Indian and Malaysian. It is never a matter of us and them. Once we start trying to see things as they are from the perspective of others and operationalize realistic change, mindful of context, Malaysians will see that our differences and interests, even those that along communal lines, crisscross one another, and that it's not a zero-sum game. Let us not forget the promise of this nation's unwritten foundation, unity and diversity, out of many histories, one future. Ultimately, a return to a more stable political equilibrium will spell good news for Malaysia's economy in a time of crisis. The new narrative that One Malaysia allows for carries the hope that we can halt the constant politicking and harping on constant discontent, not by pretending that they don't exist, but by mutual engagement and empathy as a prerequisite to genuine harmony. This will grant us the opportunity to collectively work on the things that really matter to our country's long-term survival and competitiveness. We can take heart, however, in the fact that glimpses of that empathy and genuine concern for one another are found throughout this land. In my political travels over the past decade, I've witnessed incredible stories of kindness between races. In one such instance, I know of a Malay man in a northern state confined to a wheelchair by illness, receiving weekly visits from his old Indian friend who comes just to spend moments together and assist with basic necessities. And in the eyes of our children, we can see the hope of a more harmonious tomorrow where joyful experiences in times of youthful innocence are shared with friends from different backgrounds without sacrificing one's own unique cultural heritage there is a foundation for us to work on. In these stories of hope and compassion, the problem of Malaysia is well and truly alive. Ladies and gentlemen, this country, this country has had its failings in the past, but in just over half a decade of independence, it has offered us ample opportunities to succeed and build lives within a peaceful backdrop of stability. With old mores and traditions now challenged by internal and exogenous factors, we must remain calm and reflective of the kind of future we want. In our intense and sometimes surprising journey to the present crossroads, let us not lose sight of the fact that when it's all said and done, this is about building a better tomorrow, building a better Malaysia for our children. How we choose to not navigate our way from this juncture in terms of politics and how we view each other in society will determine if we do right by both our past and our future. Thank you very much.